very good morning dear students myself dr m sarita working as professor of chemistry in st peter's engineering college uh, in previous classes we have already started our first unit that is water and its treatment so in that we have discussed in our earlier classes like about the hardness of water which is one of the important property of water and also different types of hardness and how to calculate the hardness for a given water sample if you are given with the different kinds of dissolved salts so that we have discussed and also we have discussed about the estimation of hardness of water by using the edta method so this we will discuss about the pre previous classes about the boil sorry about the water and its treatment so today in our session we are going to discuss about the boiler troubles the next topic in the unit 1 is boiler troubles so today we will discuss about different kinds of boiler troubles now coming to the boiler trouble as we already know the important engineering application of water is for the steam generation in the thermal power plants so for the steam generation when we are using the hard water for steam generation in the boilers then what will happen is the dissolved salts which are present in the hard water that may create different types of operational troubles to the boilers and which are known as the boiler troubles so boiler troubles are nothing but when we are using the hard water which is consisting of different kinds of dissolved salts in the boilers for steam generation they will create different kinds of operational troubles for the boilers and that operational troubles are known as the boiler troubles so boiler troubles are the operational troubles the operational troubles due to the use of hard water in boilers so because of the usage of the hard water in the boilers they will create different kinds of operational troubles to the boilers and they are known as the boiler troubles so we have different kinds of boiler troubles and in that mainly four different types generally we used to discuss one is the sludges and scales sludges and scales second one is priming and foaming third one is caustic embrittlement and fourth one is boiler corrosion sludges and scales this is one of the important type of uh, boiler trouble which we generally used to come across that is the formation of different kinds of precipitates within the boiler feed water so when we are using the hard water the for the steam generation when we are generating the steam the pure water will be evaporated in the form of steam whereas the dissolved salts will remain within the boiler and they will form sludges and scales these are different types of precipitates which are formed in the boilers so if the precipitates are soft and slimy they are known as the sludges and if they are hard and sticky they are known as the scale in detail we will discuss later now coming to the priming and foaming this is a another type of boiler trouble priming and foaming these two will occur simultaneously priming is nothing but the formation of bubbles in the steam so sometimes what will happen we used to generally call bumping of water so that is nothing but into the steam sometimes some of the water drops will enter and that is known as the priming and foaming as you all know foaming is nothing but the formation of bubbles on the layer of water on the top layers of water that bubbles which do not break easily so that is the foaming and generally foam is there then that will leads to priming 
So priming and foaming will occur simultaneously. Now coming to the third one that is casting embrittlement. So this is the brittlement of the boiler material. Boilers are generally made with iron or some other alloys of the iron. So because of the casting substances, the boiler material will become brittle in nature. Means weak in nature. So that will lead to the corrosion of the boiler material and that is known as the castic embrittlement. Brittlement of the boiler material due to the deposition of castic substances. Now coming to the fourth type of boiler trouble that is boiler corrosion. So corrosion is nothing but the decay or disintegration of the metal by the attack of the environment. Maybe of chemical attack or maybe of environmental attack. So when we are using water in the boilers, due to the presence of dissolved gases like oxygen or carbon dioxide or due to the presence of some amount of acids in the water, they will directly attack on the boiler material that is iron or alloy of the iron and directly that will lead to the corrosion of the boiler material. So that process is known as boiler corrosion. So on the whole, we are having four different types of boiler troubles. Sludges and scales, priming and foaming, castic embrittlement and boiler corrosion. So one by one, we are having the three <coughs> in our syllabus. In our engineering chemistry syllabus, we have sludges and scales, priming and foaming and castic embrittlement. We don't have boiler corrosion in our syllabus, we will discuss one by one these three different types of boiler troubles. So first coming to the sludges and scales. The first important type of boiler trouble is sludges example for sludge and scale generally in our home we used to use water heaters like in our childhood we used to have this kind of coiled water heaters. So when we are using these water heaters for the heating of water then what will happen is after some days if the water is hard or if the water is having some kind of dissolved salts so then what will happen is after some days a hard scale means a hard deposition white color deposition will be formed on the coil of the heater. So that scale which will be very difficult even to remove with the hammer also. It, we used to get lot of problems because of that hard scale. So that is known as a scale the hard deposition white color deposition which is formed on the coil of the water heater that is known as the scale and when we boil the water for more time maybe of 5 to 10 minutes if you boil and after some time if you cool the water then what will happen some white color precipitates will be floating in the water so that white precipitates are known as the sludges so the difference is the white soft slimy precipitates which will be floating in the water are the sludges and whereas the hard depositions which will firmly stick onto the heater that is the scale. So this is the best example to understand very well about the sludges and scales. Now coming to the boilers. So for example these are the boiler tubes. Boiler tubes. Now when we are heating the water in the boiler tubes. This is the water already we have taken. This water is known as the boiler feed water. The water which we are using in the boilers for steam generation is boiler feed water. Boiler feed water. Okay. And this is the wall of the boiler tube. <coughs> wall. Then when we are using the hard water for steam generation, the pure water without any salts that pure water will be evaporated in the form of steam for steam generation whereas the dissolved salts the total amount of dissolved salts will remain within the water itself 
so after some time what will happen the concentration of the dissolved salts will be going to increase in the boiler tube and sometimes after some time what will happen the ionic product of the dissolved salts which are present in the water is going to increase or going to be more than that of the solubility product the ionic product of the salt is going to be more than that of the solubility product of the salts so the, at that time what will happen all the dissolved salts will be thrown into the form of precipitates into the water like when we are using when we are adding some amount of salt to the water normally in the glass then what will happen initially the water will dissolve salt will dissolve and if you are going to add more and more amount of uh, salt then what will happen some amount of salt will remain undissolved because there the ionic product is going to be more than that of the solubility product in the same way in the boiler feed water also after reaching some concentration then the ionic product of the salts will increase than that of the solubility product at that condition all the dissolved salts will be thrown in the form of precipitates and that precipitates will be of two types one kind of precipitates like this which are soft slimy and loose precipitates which will be floating in the water like this and these are known as the sludges these are known as the sludges whereas for some of the salts they will form a hard sticky layer some of the precipitates of the salts which will form which will firmly stick on to the wall of the boiler and they will form a hard sticky layer this hard and sticky deposition hard and sticky deposition on the wall of the boiler this is known as the scale whereas sludges are soft slimy loose precipitates which will be floating on the inner side walls right on the inside of the boiler feed water whereas the scales are hard and sticky depositions which will firmly stick on to the inner side wall this is the wall of the boiler and this one is the scale means this hard deposition which is formed on the wall of boiler that is known as the scale so soft slimy precipitates if they are formed they are known as the sludges whereas if hard and sticky depositions are formed they are known as the scales so what is the reason for the formation of sludges and scales that we will discuss in detail so first we will discuss about the sludges <coughs> what are sludges sludges are soft slimy and loose precipitates which will be floating soft loose slimy precipitates which are floating in boiler feed water boiler feed water they are known as the sludges sludges are easy to remove whereas scales they are hard and they will firmly stick on to the walls it will be difficult to remove even with the chisel also hammer or chisel also so sludges coming to the sludges these are the soft slimy loose precipitates which will be floating on the inner side inner water of the boiler tubes so how they will be formed what is the reason for the formation of sludges is due to the presence of some of the salts like magnesium chloride magnesium carbonate magnesium sulfate and calcium chloride these are some of the dissolved salts which are having high solubility in the hot water whereas low solubility in the cold water so generally sludges will be formed in the colder portions of the boiler tubes these are formed in the colder portions of the boiler tubes and they will get deposited 
where we are having some kind of bends and tubes like this if we are having any kind of bends in the boiler tubes where the rate of flow of the boiler feed water will be less in that whereas bends reverts and joints at this places the rate of flow of water will be low at that places this sludges will get deposited so sludges are formed due to the deposition of or due to the presence of some of the salts like magnesium chloride magnesium carbonate magnesium sulfate and also calcium chloride these salts if they are present in the boiler feed water after some time when we are generating the steam these salts will be thrown in the form of soft loose limy precipitates which are known as sludges and these salts which are having high solubility in the hot water and low solubility in the cold water because of that reason sludges will be generally formed where we are having the colder portions in the boiler tubes and also they will get deposited at bends reverts and joints of the boiler tubes so this is the reason for the formation of sludges so what is the disadvantages of sludge formation so what will happen if there is a formation of a sludge in the boiler <coughs> disadvantages of sludge formation the first thing is whether that is a sludge or scale both of them are poor conductors poor conductors of heat they are having the poor thermal conductivity and because of that reason if sludges are formed in the boilers then what will happen is whatever the heat given to the boilers will not totally transferred to the water because if the sludges are present they will reduce the heat content because they are acting as the poor conductors of heat they are having the poor thermal conductivity because of that reason they will not transfer the total heat to the boiler feed water but in the boilers generally we have to maintain the constant steam generation and because of that we have to give excess heat to the boilers to maintain constant steam generation if sludges are formed we have to give excess heat to the boilers excess of heat so this excess of heat will leads to the wastage of fuel means if we are giving excess of heat to the boilers that requires more amount of fuel for the consumption so fuel consumption is going to increase that will leads to wastage of fuel so as the sludges are poor conductors of heat they will not transfer the total heat given to the boiler tubes and then we have to give excess of heat to the boilers to maintain the constant steam generation for that we need more amount of fuel so fuel consumption is going to increase that will leads to wastage of the fuel and sometimes what will happen is sludges are alone sludges are not that much harmful because they will be easily removed but whereas sometimes what will happen is the sludges will get entrapped with the scale forming substances sometimes sludges entrapped <coughs> by scales so in that time what will happen the thickness of scale is going to increase because of the sludges so in that case the scale is going to increase its thickness and that will leads to more amount of wastage of fuel so sludges will get entrapped with the scale forming substances that is also harmful to the boilers <coughs> and sometimes what will happen is it will leads to choking of pipes in our 
tube also generally you might have observed when we are having the tubes like this for example this is the water flow and some places will be used to have some valves valves are condensers like this which will control the flow of water so with the movement of this wheel we will be able to control the flow of water which is flowing in this water tubes and sometimes what will happen is a white color precipitate will be formed if the water which is flowing in this tubes if it is hard water then what will happen a white color precipitate will be formed near this valve so that will prevent the movement of this valve and it is known as a choking stroking choking of the pipes so choking of the pipes also that will leads to the deficiency of the boiler uh, what we can say boiler uh, uh, activity so that is known as the choking of pipes so this is the disadvantages of sludges one is the wastage of fuel and second one is it will increase sometimes it will increase the thickness of the scale and also choking of the pipes now how to remove or how to prevent the sludge formation we all know that prevention is better than cure so how to prevent the sludge formation in the boilers the most important thing is why we are getting all these troubles whatever may be the boiler trouble we are getting the boiler trouble due to the presence of dissolved salts and if we are able to use already softened water in the boilers for steam generation then we'll be able to prevent all the sludges and the scales so first thing is how to prevent by using already softened water <coughs> second thing is this is the important process which is known as the blow down process blow down process blow down process is nothing but all the boilers for example if it is the boiler all the boilers will be having a special tap at the bottom of the boilers this is for the blow down process this is one tap one special tap for blow down process blow down is nothing but as we are getting the concentration of the dissolved salts in the boiler tube then only that sludge or scales will be formed and sometimes if we are able to remove the concentrated water or if we are able to replace the concentrated water with the fresh water then to some extent we can reduce the concentration of the dissolved salts in boiler tubes so that process is known as a blow down process it is a replacement of concentrated water with the fresh water that process is known as the blow down process and all the boilers will be having the special blow down tap at the bottom of the boiler tube so this is known as the blow down process this is a important process to prevent the sludge formation in the boilers and if any case if the sludges are formed how to remove it like how we will clean our utensils in the kitchen in the same way if the sludges are formed by scraping with a wire brush we will be simply able to remove all the sludges because they are the soft loose slimy precipitates easily by wrap, scraping with a wire brush we can easily remove the sludges from the boiler tubes so this is about the sludges sludges are once again i'll repeat sludges are soft loose slimy precipitates and which are formed inside the boiler feed water and they are formed due to the salts which are having high con high solubility at the high temperatures and low solubility at the low temperatures so such kind of salts are magnesium chloride magnesium carbonate magnesium sulfate and calcium chloride so such salts will form and generally sludges are formed in the colder portions and they will get deposited generally at the flow at the parts of boiler tubes where we are having the less uh, less flow rate of the water 
so the bends joints rivers at the places it will deposit and uh, the disadvantages are wastage of the fuel choking of the pipes and increase of the thickening of the scale formation <coughs> and uh, prevention of the sludges is how to prevent by using already softened water and in case if concentration of the dissolved salt increases by using the blow down process also we can prevent the formation of sludges if sludges are already formed then they can be removed by scrapping with a wire brush so this is about the sludges in the next session we will discuss about the scale formation its disadvantages and its removal so about today's session this that's all uh, in the next session we'll discuss about the next boiler troubles thank you